Welcome to Donuts and Alcohol, the roundtable discussion, uh, the Cincinnati State of Music. I want my panelists to introduce themselves, starting with my right. I'm Ash here with Double Sin Magazine. You uh, may have seen me out at the events, at Donuts and Alcohol events. Shout out to them. They've been a big supporter of everything. I'm Nakia Shante of Crown Chester Entertainment Agency. Um, I'm kicking it to I can't wait to get a good conversation going. Uh, I'm Trevor Gargano. Part of uh, College Beats. Love Donuts and Alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'm Donye Fame Harrison uh, of 826 Entertainment, Overground Management Group, and Everybody Eats, producer for Santino Corleone. And uh, my name is Sharif D. King. I'll be leading the conversation today. Let's uh, put the first topic on the table, which is the Cincinnati Music Collective. What would you say is the biggest thing for Cincinnati, and why even Drake is talking about Cincinnati right now? I'm kind of glad that came up. Um, I don't think Drake is talking about Cincinnati. I, uh, I don't think that's a, really anything we need to be proud about. What we have to be proud about is actually living here right now every single day. I mean, one of them is sitting at the table, fame at the end of the table. I mean, he's been putting in work here, putting out lots of great music. So um, I think the fact that Cincinnati Miz mission was kind of a moot point, if anyone disagrees. I think part of the... Uh reason why we have, you know, certain disagreements is because we're not proud. So almost the opposite, but not in a row. You know, I have this, I'm not from here, but I hear this negative connotation, like, I got to get out of here. I got to go. I got Cincinnati ain't nothing. And because we don't have that pride and that support from each other, that's one of the things that hold us back. Like, hey, we happy. They did say our name. <laughs> that's exciting. And it's not nothing, you know, it didn't give us anything. Um, but always to be proud about the talent, the people, like you said, the people that's from here. Like, if they say at any time, I would be proud of that. I understand the, you know, the mute part about it, it doesn't mean anything, but, um, but we lack pride in general here. So it's great that they're excited for me. And I just want to share this. Although, you know, Drake may have not said anything to shine light specifically on Cincinnati, any light is good light. So for somebody to say something about Cincinnati, Cincinnati doesn't really come up like that. So we need to celebrate that. We need to celebrate that. I guess my response to everyone who's excited about it is what are we going to do with it? So let's see what you got. Nice. Well, leading to what we're going to do with Cincinnati, what can we do with the Cincinnati Music Collective to make sure the world hears Cincinnati? Uh, I think we can really all play our parts, understand who's doing what for the, you know, who's doing the best at what they're doing. And I think uh, I love sitting at this table with a collective group that I th think really understands what they want to do. And we all have a really good opportunity of continuing to grow forward on something something big. Um, in my opinion, just as a business, as a collective, uh, everybody should drop the egos. I mean, that's a that's something that's been kind of generation throughout the years with the problems in Cincinnati is that there's always been an ego thing blocking everybody to work with everybody and the business behind everybody. You have collectives who are um, very talented, might not have the finances behind it. Um, then you have other collectives who, and this is no shade, may not be as um, talented, but they might have extreme finances behind it and everything like that. Um, I think everybody needs to get together as a whole and just no egos, if that's possible. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, a lot of other cities tend to shine a little bit better because they know when it comes to, as a whole, the city, the community, it's them against everybody else, not them against somebody else down the block. I guess, uh, Fame, you mentioned finances. Do you feel like finances is what holds artists back in Cincinnati, or do you feel like it's a collective of not knowing how to promote yourself, people not coming together as a whole, or is it the, really truly the finances? Yes and no. Um, to be honest, you can make a dollar like a thousand. It all depends on how you market, how you brand yourself, and the way you portray it, the way you look. Nobody has to know that you pay one cent per cup, you know, anything like that. To the general public, it may look like, you know, you pay whatever amount of money. I mean, it's, that's how the industry is. Um, it's To me, it's just basically getting the right type of people behind you, the right teams. Nice. I like that. Um, Cincinnati, there are a lot of people trying to get out of Cincinnati. So for artists that stay out of Cincinnati, may go to L.A. or may go to D.C. and spend three years, four years to relocate, to still promote Cincinnati. How do you feel about those artists who go to other places, relocate so that they can promote Cincinnati? I don't 
don't think anything's wrong with that. Not at all. Um, advancement is advancement. You're an artist at the end of the day. You know, your job, honestly, is not to rep just Cincinnati, it's to rep yourself as a brand, as an artist. Now, if that bleeds back to supporting the city, then of course, yes. And then, of course, when you're out and you're in other places, people are going to claim you. You know, when any artist comes out and they blow up, first thing people say is, oh, he's from here. Or I remember this, then the third. But as far as like going someplace, going to Atlanta, which is kind of oversaturated and overdone with, you know, um, people go down there and they tend to think, it's almost like going to New York. Back in the days, everybody was flocking to New York because that was the music mecca. So they was going there for a chance. I don't think we should knock anybody going anywhere for a chance, especially if we can't give it here. You know, you can't knock somebody else for going to another place to get paid more. And you do you want them to sit there and still get paid minimum wage and while you look happy and do what you got to do? No, you know, so we can't knock these artists for doing that. But as far as the development of the artists, will help out with the representation. Once they get down into a place like that, if you move to Atlanta or, or Charlotte or Houston or something like that, whatever helps you, helps you. Cincinnati is growing as a whole, the music collective and things like that. I want to ask you, starting on my right, where do you see Cincinnati's music scene in the next two to three years? Uh, I think there's a lot of great young talent right now. Um, a lot of them have just debuted. Um, two of them that stick out on my mind that just debuted this year. Um, POC is a great hip hop collective. They just put out their debut last week. Um, they're very promising. You can hear their early stuff right now. Just imagine what they can do in two years. Um, there's another artist, uh, Papa Gore, that I'm really, um, really enjoying right now. Um, he released his debut in January, I think. It's called Hope. It's an acronym. It's on all streaming services. Both of these are. Um, if that's what the future of Cincinnati sounds like, I think we're in a really good place. And that's only one slice of the pie. That's just two artists that debuted this year. Uh, if you compound that on top of everything else, I think we're headed in a really good direction. Um, as Cincinnati changes overall, um, the banks, everything's growing, everything's business are coming here, jobs are coming here, all that. You can feel it almost like, hey, it's about to happen. Um, and for me personally, I've committed myself almost to making sure music and entertainment is not left out of this whole bubble that's going on here in this space. Um, I've even committed myself to the artist support side of it, like, hey, this is for y'all. I need y'all to be good and all that stuff like that, but I'm going to make sure that we're a part of this thing. And so, like, the biggest thing about the artists in general is having, like I said, the support system around them, focus on what their job is. Um, and it is, you know, to grow your brand and help yourself out, blah, blah, blah. I want my people like my business, but it's mostly to help the artists and support them in these ways, getting the venues, helping them out, developing them. And once we do that, they can go to L.A. and they won't forget about us. Now, if we treat them bad while we're here and we don't take care of them um, and, you know, push them to the side and don't help them develop, you know, and support them, then they go to L.A. and say, forget you. You know what I'm saying? So if we get the support systems in line um, and, you know, they'll come all the time. DK, you spoke to being committed and really focused. What are the three uh, aspects that you really want to touch on to make sure that Cincinnati is really seen? It's a polished thing. Um, I think people have started to accept anything um, because they know somebody or because it's cool. Like, some of this stuff is not that good. Um, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of good stuff from some newer, some newer people, some people I've never, I'm like, who are you? Why are you don't have a show? Why do they have it? Because we know them. Now, some of it is good. Um, so I think it's a polished thing altogether. Um, uh, information, information changes things. Um, people don't know how to put their music out, uh, how, that, how it needs to be recorded, mixing and match. They don't, they really don't know. They start now on their computer at home because it's that accessible now where you can, anybody can just do it. Um, you know what I'm saying? So they don't have the information and knowledge. Um, and the second thing is just the, the wherewithal to keep going. It's not easy. It's pretty simple, but it's not, e it's not easy. And, and people quit after two, two bad experiences. One time somebody said no to me, whatever like that. You have to have that over anything else. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can be talented. And if you say somebody tell you no, you quit, that's all you're going to be. So yeah, those three things. Nice. Fame, you're a producer. Um, you lead a lot of the music composing. What would you say is the most important part that goes into an artist really, really celebrating and saying, this is an artist that we're proud of here in Cincinnati? Like I said, it's about branding, marketing. It's even outside of being a producer. You know, sometimes um, 
you can have a, a artist and he won't have uh like you say a song like the kid said some people aren't that good um that's just a fact some music isn't that good some artists aren't that good but as a as a whole their package might be great enough to push them forward they might be ready um in the touch and what she said to add into that um a lot of these artists that's coming up they don't know you know um Back when I came up, you had everybody trying to put their hands on you. It's almost like the neighborhood. Everybody's going to put their hands on you to help you out. You know, come here and check this out. I'm going to help you out with this. I'm going to help push this. Now nobody's doing that, you know. Um, but one of the, probably one of the main things that uh, one of the, these the artists can have is just have a small sense of business themselves to help push themselves, you know. If you don't have that wheel, that machine, that, that team, and all like that, you just can't sit there and be stagnant. You know, you got to be able to push yourself and everything like that. Get out there and learn. Um, if you can sit up there playing Fortnite for three or four hours, you can, you know, get online and research anything that you got to research. I mean, Google's a big college for anybody, you know. So I don't, I don't really put an excuse on that. You know, I, I think that everybody should be able to do what they got to do. Big cities move on. Uh, the network, the collectives, mentors, things of that nature. I know a lot of people that I've met here in Cincinnati have said, well, I don't have anybody to show me. What is the recipe to getting someone around me who can show me? Again, people like you guys who are curators to the Cincinnati music scene to want to help these artists. What can they do to get you guys to say, hey, I want to help you? How do they get your attention? I mean, we're actively out there looking for this. So, I mean, if you don't pop up on our radar at some point or another, there's a problem. So you need to be out there promoting yourselves. You need to know how to use social media, all of the social media platforms. You need to be on them and you need to have links to a website. You need to be able to have things that you can send to people. Um, you can't make yourself marketable. Um, the radio station can't pick you up. The blogs don't have any information about you. You know, um, it's all about, you know, rapping is probably 20% of what you're going to do, you know. And it needs to be a strong 20%, but, you know, you need to mix that around with your marketing. You need to know how to navigate in the digital age. And if you know how to do that, you're going to hit all of our radars because um, that's all we do is navigate digital age. Um, first, it's like some, some people are just undeniable. Like, man, that's good. Like, that's the first thing. If you see something that's just amazing, you got to be like, wow. Like, and you got to figure out where it comes from. Um, and then the second thing... Um, it's kind of, um, I like to see you working already. Like for me, personally, if I see you already trying to do the show, and I see you going hard when there's one person there, and you're still good, when I see you going hard, when I see you everywhere I'm at, and you pop it up, and you came up to me and didn't act weird and said, hey, what is your name? <laughs> and I told you, um, if I give you my number and you call me back, I give my number all the time. I, I do extend my hand. They won't even call back. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So if you work in, I like to see a worker, somebody who just like, man, they're they going to do it if I help them or not. Like that person um, who, yeah, they intrigue me. Everything's right in front of you. We have the internet. You can figure it out. Like it's just a matter of getting out there. And all of us, I can say, have come from a position where we've just worked and grinded on ourselves to build and, and no excuses. And so if you, if you accept that, you won't let any excuses happen. You'll get where you want to be or you'll be able to at least get to that further point. So it's just all about the person's motivation. Um, I'm going to say it like that old Negro spiritual. Mm, be humble. These artists are not humble. Um, some people, yes, yeah, so they, they most beautiful people around. But some artists, just because you got a song out, the first thing they don't want to take criticism. Criticism, they won't. They won't take any type of opinion. Um, being humble is a is a big thing for an artist. Yeah, you do three or four shows and stuff like that. But you you doing them in Cincinnati, you know. I've met artists who've done two or three shows in Mad Frog, and you go talk to them, and they act like they got a platinum record. You know, a couple of likes on Facebook, a couple of downloads on Spotify, you know, a couple of views on YouTube. And they just seem and act as though they've made it. If you act as though you've made it, then what do you need me or you or anybody up here for? You know, you don't need us. You don't need anybody for it. You got, you got it. So be humble about it. You know, hey, 
I do need your help. You know, I only I got A, B, and C, but I need D. You know, I need the finances or could you, um, you give me some words of wisdom? I mean, some of us up here work with specific artists. Don't be afraid to say, hey, there was something that you did for, you know, this that artist. Uh, could you put me in the right direction? And then other people who are in position like us have to not be afraid to pass off the person or pass off the information. If you don't know, you have to be able to say, hey, call Matt, call Sharif, call the kid, you know what I'm saying? Call up College Beats, ask them, you know what I'm saying? Information is knowledge. We're not going to get ahead as a collective if we're not sharing the knowledge at all. We're too afraid of it. You know, we're afraid that someone's going to get ahead. And that goes back to being humble. That goes back to that ego thing. You know, it's just break those barriers down. I think we'll have a beautiful music scene once again. I'm like, so we never had it once again. So you spoke to uh, certain artists that you may work with or Nikia working with certain artists. I've heard that there's a thing where it's clicking in Cincinnati. How do we change that? If that is, I'm not saying that it is, but how do we change that? How do we go about everybody working with everybody, but also still keeping the polish? Um, and I can I include myself in this, but I think we just all need to get out there at each other's events more. Um, and I think we need to make a better effort of coordinating those events before they're planned to um, allow for everyone to get to them because every one of us is out all the time. But some of us are in north side, some of us are downtown, some of us are, you know, up in the west side. You know, there's all kinds of stuff going on, and that's a great thing. Just imagine what we could do if we maximize on that. And um, they would second us networking events if we're at the same events. So I think um, that would go a long way to uniting everybody. Um, I think doing uh, events like uh, specifically for artists and for the community, so like not just a party, but like for them. Um, at Timeless, they do the plug and play every month, and anybody who gets their own time can get their music heard. Um, so it's not about who's in the party, who's in not in the party. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who gonna come and walk in there and get it done? You know, that type of thing. So we have, I, I try to create things that is for y'all, open mics, those things that where you can engage personally so you don't have to feel like you're standing around, oh, I gotta go get to her. Now this is for you, you're supposed to be here. It's not a, a thing, here you go. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, I think supporting of each other, I mean, I think you're definitely right, Matt. I think people and, and Kia, I think supporting each other is definitely key, getting out there, making events. Uh, you you two be like definitely make your lane in doing that, and I think that's great, and I think continuing on doing that is, is perfect. And I think College Beats, we're going to try as hard as we can to try to bridge that in our own way. Um, but right now, College Beats is a DJ. We're trying to support all DJs in the entire city, so... Um, that's a, and and DJs play artist music, so we're trying to make our biggest support to help a lane that maybe wasn't being paid enough attention to, so we can give back and help in our own way. Um, in my my view, I think it goes back to that collective. Um, artists need to become more promoters for each other artists, also at the same time. Um, something happens, we all see it. Artists will perform, they leave, people that came with them leave with them. There's big space right there. You know, you want other people, you want other people to um, stay and wait for you. Um, be a, become a fan for the other artists. You're an artist, so you know how it feels. So at least be a fan for them. Encourage your fans to support that artist as well. Um, I also tell people. Friends and family are not your fans. They, they're supposed to do it. So people outside of that are your actual true supporters. So everybody needs to start trying to target those markets for each other as a collective. And if we get some type of um, like code of quality or something like that, um, coming up in like the 90s and early 2000s, they had uh, certain groups that if you were touched by them or got their stamp of approval, you knew that, you know, that was the ish. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, that, that album was going to be dope and everything like that. That artist was dope. And it was like a co-sign without you even knowing who they was. And I think that something needs to be seen. You know, people need to see everybody as a collective together. You know, um, the 
the Jamie Shays need to be seen with the Tories, you know, the the Monty C's need to be seen with the Santinos, you know, the 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 young exes need to be seen with the fames and the kill wheels and everybody everybody needs to be seen with each other and see that. Once you system we all know since that is a place where you see it, you hear it, and it's like, you know, here we come following. If they see it, they may come. If not, what harm does it, you know, what harm does it do? It helps us as a collective still and makes us as a unit hit the industry even harder. So I think that's just something as as we what we should do as far as when it comes to support and fanship and everything. Because when the fans and the city sees that, they'll rally behind us in some form of way. I'd rather have five people get behind one one artist, you know, instead of none. So Sounds good. You've spoken to a lot of different artists here in Cincinnati. I'm going to ask each of you guys to name an artist that is truly a Cincinnati bread artist and represents the culture of Cincinnati. Uh, one of my favorite right now, um, I don't think anyone would argue with me, is Tribe. Um, I mean, they put out great music, but they live their message every single day, basically. Um, you can find them somewhere living their message. Um, and I think that's probably the coolest thing going on in the city right now. Um, my favorite right now in Cincinnati is a guy named D8. Um, I heard this song, um, like I said, undeniable. I heard this song, Arriva Dirty. He wasn't there. I heard it and I was like, who is this? I had to find out who it was. That song just touched me. I don't know why. I was feeling like Drake was there, but I was like, it's so weird. Um, and I found him. And he was just a humble dude. All that talent wrapped up in this dude that's just chilling. Like, and it's pure. He takes his time with his music. He, everything means something. And like, but when you see him, you think he just kind of like, but everything is, it's a, it's a big, pretty picture. Like, he puts it together amazing like that, but he doesn't give off that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, when I tell him you should, but people need to be whatever. So, but that humility is that even attracted me even more. Like that whole way you could just be cool. You know what I'm saying? But have that. That's my guy. Uh, I like to think we have a unique perspective. Like I've, I've had so many great relationships with artists in the city and so many of them are doing so much for the culture in the city. But when I think about my favorite artist, I think who's catering to my audience and who's really trying to push, who I know I've worked with a lot, who's trying to push for college students and definitely Starship uh, with Jimmy and Chris, uh, Jimmy two times and Chris awesome. they been with them in so many occasions i know how hard they're pushing to be part of that college atmosphere and i've seen it i've seen them perform in so many different atmospheres with the kids and having that them have that kind of energy that touches them so uh yeah that's a long answer for me y'all know this the wrong question to ask me i already know yeah. there we go but I be, know. because of that you know i really have to be fair um i'm gonna say santino but at the same time uh Santino, Monty, D8, um, Wino. Um, there's a couple more. God for me for forgetting their names, but just off those those right there, that core. If we can get behind them, all of them as a core, as far as with the knowledge, the business, the resources, the finances, I don't think that there is no reason why Cincinnati should not be a force to reckon with in Ohio at least for the first couple of years. We we will shut down all that Cleveland talk and all our other talk and everything. I'm just being real about it. You know I ain't got no filter. I knew so it. I don't, I don't, shut I don't, it I don't, down. I knew it. We will shut all that down. You know? Yeah. And there's no reason why these names are not on list. You know, these no there's no reason why DJs aren't supporting these artists and stuff like that, period. So we need to get behind these artists. Um, but yeah, uh, therapy, you know, hey. You get it. All right, so you know, it's almost time to wrap up. I can't leave without asking this last question. It's important to me. It's some of the things that like really sit with me. You spoke on business and, you know, putting things together. Can you name a brand that is really instrumental in the artists, in the culture, in the format that doesn't get enough respect, that touches on the DJ and the producer, that touches on all aspects, the culture, the, the fashion, the tech that's happening right here in Cincinnati. It's important. If you could, please name a brand because it's important for the world to know. I think I'm stealing Nikia's thunder here, uh, but I'm going to say Timeless Recordings. Um, they're 
at the forefront, definitely a recording studio, but they're very big in artist development. Um, they have a wide range of artists that they work with in and out of the booth. Um, they're opening their doors to a lot of different opportunities outside of recording. Um, they have Gary Owen recording podcasts there. So, I mean, um, they're becoming the elite artist development brand in the city, in my opinion. Um, that's one. Two, my guys at Black Owned, um, I actually means that's, I literally call him my boss dad. Like, he keep me on game, like, f game all day. Um, if you out here moving and shaking, and you, you don't need some clothes, and you out here moving enough, they'll help you out. They make sure you look nice. They make sure if it's beneficial to them, it's beneficial to you. Like, they always where need, they need to be. They out here in different places, and like I said, if you down for it, and you got the polish you there, they take you with them, and they, doing, they do stuff for us all the time. So, like, for me personally, he to help me so much, like I said, understanding, because I'm not from here, <laughs> understanding, you know what I'm saying, how to move here, who to, you know, what's real and what's not, you know what I'm saying, that kind of thing. So they always been holding me down since I've been here. Uh, double sin, the man in the red shirt at the end. Uh, e easily, easily my uh, Cincinnati hip hop guru for, you know, everything I've had to know. And, and I just uh, graduated and got more involved in everything and for Anything I've been looking for, I, I talked to Matt. So, and of course, donuts and alcohol, my other number one source. <laughs> I know if we're allowed to say donuts, but yeah, I they're, know. Like, they're I in there. Like, we're here. <laughs> we're on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, pretty much the same ones we all talked about uh, Timeless, Donuts and Alcohol, Black Owned, uh, College Beats, um, even my own collective. Um, uh, Everybody Eats with Overground Management, uh, Heat 100 DJs. Um, those brands push the forefront as far as like trying to connect everybody with everybody. And they're very unselfish. Everybody that I mentioned is unselfish. I've never had to, you know, worry about somebody not extending information or helping hand or anything like that. So those would be the main ones I tell somebody to look up talk to, you know, get in contact with. There we go. I want to thank you guys for joining us. This was amazing. Donuts and alcohol for having me lead the conversation. I am Sharif D. King, and this is a roundtable discussion. And of course, also the state of Cincinnati music, arts, lifestyle. I want you guys to continue to follow these brands, focus on these brands. So if you could, just give you a social media before we leave. You can find me at Illmatic, three L's and two T's, like Matt. Uh, and then you can find Doublesin at DBLCIN. Uh, we're on all social platforms and we put out some cool shit. Uh, you got Nakia Shante, that's me. You got at Crown Chaser ENT, that's my company. And you got Timeless R Studio, hit them up too. Uh, everything College Beats, just search that, you'll be able to find it. Uh, we just, we support, we've been supporting hip hop news for probably five years now. Fame 826, uh, F-A-M-E, the number's 826. That's on all social media, Google, you know, interplanetary language, anything you got to do. Here we go. Ask Sharif D. King. Keep it king, man.